Hello and today we will come back on one of the coolest watch I've recently come across and I know that for some Hermes is not seen as a serious watchmaker but please revise your thoughts because not only had they come up with some very interesting and creative uh, timepieces of the last few years but they are also an important shareholder of Vaucher Manufacture, one of the best in the industry when it comes to movement, development and manufacturing. Well, what I particularly like with Hermes is that they know how to give time to do things right and at the same time, re well, remain true to themselves and this uh, Leur de la Lune is a perfect illustration of this. So instead of going down the route of uh, kind of classical complications, well, Hermès is focusing more on playfulness, but nevertheless super technical developments, but hiding in a certain way this technicity in favor of the story the watch actually tells. So many prefer to do things a bit differently, but uh, this is the perfect reason why I really wanted to go behind uh, the scene of what is indeed a very smart watch, a complicated one. As a quick reminder, this is a very special moon phase, actually a double moon phase showing southern and uh, northern hemisphere. But the twist is uh, that it's not the moon that are moving, but these two subdials that are rotating around the central axis, covering and uncovering these two moons. And just for info, in every moon phase watches, well, the disc always comprises uh, two moons, but one is, of course, kind of generally hidden under the dial. And the reason why you have two moons is that a full lunar cycle consists of 29.5 days. Uh, 29.53 to be actually uh, very precise and you can't have a gear train with only 29.5 teeth right but 59 teeth the double yes that's possible so the mega tricks uh, with this watch and, and yes i do use uh, the plural tricks is that you have these two sub dials uh, rotating rotating 29.5 days from new moon to full moon but the hour and minute dial as well as the day dial will always remain in a vertical position 12 o'clock will always be at the top first of the month always at the top just the same so how do they do this how is this time information carried to this dial well let's find out with Jean-François Mojon founder of Cronod with whom Hermès had the very good idea of collaborating to develop this really interesting timepiece first of all we have to put all the indications through the center it's come from the base movement and goes through the center and then redirected to the sub dial dates and hours and minutes that's, uh, that's one point. Also the second point, everything has to be uh, reduced in the, in the high, not to, to be too, too thick. That's also uh, a challenge. And uh, we should also be able to make the correction, of course, <laughs> for the hours and minutes, for the date and for the moon. And all that together, and also one point, if you look at the watch, you see no technique, uh, no gearing, no screws, nothing. And that is uh, really not easy to do because uh, to fix anything, you need a screw, <laughs> you, need, you need a gasket, uh, you need uh, wheels, but that is behind behind the scene and the aesthetic is in the front place. For the uh, hour and minute dial, actually the information that is conveyed to that dial is only the minute and the, the hour is actually hidden underneath that small dial. Exactly, and for that we had to use a special gearing and uh, it's patented now. It's just because we have no place or not enough space to use a standard solution and we had to find something really different, new, and we like this challenge, yes. We have two uh, moon phases, make one turn in 59 uh, days, and uh, parallel to that, we have also the 31 uh, gearing, or T's, for the date. And uh, for the correction, we have to place both uh, star wheels, in the same position at one place to make the correction. And that is also a trick, also something new by this watch. And to maintain the, the sub-dials always vertical, also how is uh, this achieved? Uh, for that you need a fixed reference. And usually we use a fixed reference in the middle. But in that case, uh, if we, we use it in the middle, then the, the movement would be too thick, too thick. And that's why we use an external gearing, fixed gearing, connected to the dial, 
with uh, with uh, also gearing uh, to place the the the, the sub dial always in the same direction. That's the first uh, things we use, and uh, the second one is also that the chassis uh, must be balanced. That's also very important. The assembly, it's uh, also what we take care, it's very important because we have to make 200 pieces, should be easy to, to assemble. It can take time, but should be easy to assemble. And that's why we work together with the watchmaker also from the beginning in the development process. And uh, now the first series or the series is uh, currently in, in work and uh, it's going well. But what we have also to, to take care of, of course, is to have enough space that everything also uh, works smoothly. That's, that's, uh, that's important and that's why we have uh, the right watchmaker and good watchmaker. Also very important in uh, after sales service is when we have to change, for example, the base movement, it's easy to do. And it's really two parts. We can uh, easily uh, separate and change the components. But like I said, I do like Hermes, I do like their approach and I do like the human side of their business. They are just uh, nice people, so nice that they had uh, invited in an astronomical inspired environment a few of my journalist watchmaking colleagues and myself to explain us uh, the genesis of this watch. <laughs> So we are presently in Tenerife, in the Canarian Island, next to one of the most famous observatory uh, that is installed here since uh, decades. And uh, Hermes is presenting uh, its new complication of uh, Hermes time, as we do every second year. Uh, it is a uh, moon phase, but uh, not a simple one. As the moon becomes the principal character, the rest, the functional uh, data, uh, hours and dates become the satellites. On est venu justement photographier donc la face visible de la Lune sur les deux les deux lunes qui sont représentées sur le cadran. On a choisi la nacre justement parce que c'était une une matière et une couleur qui se rapprochent un petit peu de la surface de la Lune et donc on est venu justement inscrire et, et, et transférer la photo de la Lune sur les petites pastilles de nacre. Donc effectivement, on a utilisé donc le mouvement H1137 sur lequel donc on a ajouté donc ce module. C'est un module donc qui a été réalisé euh, avec une, une épaisseur de module de, de 4,2 mm. This time, it's not uh, a time about the time suspended. It's a message about our vision of the sky, our vision of the dream, uh, personalized perhaps by the moon, which is a, a key uh, companion for every one of us. This is a limited edition of a 100 piece uh, for each of the version. There is a version in uh, Aventurine uh, dial, another version is in Meteorite dial, and each of them being uh, 100 pieces. Yes, well, this was pretty nice, but uh, without this privilege, a little moment, well, I would have appreciated this watch just as much. And I rarely talk about price, but seriously, you do get your money's worth of quality watchmaking with these. So all the best, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for our patrons, and viva watchmaking! <laughs>